Come on out. Hello, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> come on out. All right, you guys take a seat. You can take the far one. James, you can come in the middle. How you guys doing? Woo! <laughs> Thank you guys hey. all so much for coming out for this special screening of The Conjuring 2. I think you guys know these two faces next to me, right? This guy. This guy more. <laughs> I'm super pumped that we've got both of them here tonight. And, and that intensity, that the creator put into the first one. If, uh, I don't have details I'm expecting. I just want it to be as good or better than the first one. <laughs> those, those aren't expectations. You're like, I just want it to be good or better. <laughs> he pulled out all the stops on this one, though. So. Yeah. Well, and what I love about this franchise, too, is the fact that it's not really a sequel, per se. It's more like right. another chapter in the series. Is that kind of yeah, how you look? Yeah, um, played by Vera Famiga and Patrick Wilson, uh, you know, playing the characters of Ed and Lorraine Warren from the first film. And so it really is, for me, you know, taking these two characters that people really like and just expanding on their story, expanding on their, their relationship. And, uh, and, but having said that, I wanted to make a different movie. And so, uh, so we took the story out of the States and shifted across the pond to England. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I saw the first one, fell in love with it. Slash, when you saw the first one, did you feel like there's something different about this? Because the thing that stands out for me is that there's that, that love story, that connection in there, too. Yeah, well, the first one for me, it was right around the time that I sort of, you know, first started producing. And so when I saw that movie, it was, it was the first thing I'd seen in a long time that was really a supernatural movie that was focused on the story and focused on the characters. And the scares were constructed <clears throat> not out of sort of gore and special effects, but out of you know, great angles and tension and suspense and all that kind of stuff. So I, you know, I fell in love with the movie and I fell in love with him, which you know, I saw the first Saw, but I didn't know who directed it at the time. You know? <laughs> so I was like, you know, uh, started looking him up. And, and I uh, left this guy going way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, I was like, I gotta take a second and like blow up your spot a little bit because mm -hmm. just seeing you guys meet downstairs, it was like there was such love between the two of you guys. I've been dying have never to meet this guy before. for so long. Yeah. Yeah, can I just say something very quickly? Um, Patrick Wilson just wants me to tell you how much he loves you, <laughs> and he is so bummed he cannot be here tonight. And so, uh, so maybe we can say something nice yeah, to Yeah, you got to say hi to Patrick, wherever he's out <laughs> there. <or> <laughs> 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 Not in this room, but anyway, yeah, Patrick's great. Thank, thank you very much. Cool. Well, and just talking about horror films, just jumping off what you said, Slash, where it's like there are very different horror genres where it's slasher or there's those build to the scary moments, but you also have a story mixed into that. And I think some of the things that you do so well, James, is give you those moments of respite where you get a breath and then you're like, oh, my God, I'm covering my face again because I'm terrified. Yeah, I, I think, listen, I mean, uh, you know, um, I, I, I really believe, you know, um, you can't just make a movie that's just, you know, water wall with scares and uh, you really need to get in there and create characters that you really care about and that, and that you really like because the more you care about them, the more you're invested in who they are and therefore that's when... exactly yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, and therefore when, you know, scary things start to happen to them, you actually, you know, you don't want to see them get hurt. And so uh, I know that seems like a very easy thing to say, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it's not easy to, to, to do it and to do it right. And so having, obviously, great writing, you know, from, you know, I had great writers on this and, and having great actors to pull it off as well make a whole world of difference. Yeah. Well, and working on a project like this, it's really interesting because, Slash, you've done horror films as well, but they haven't been necessarily based off of true stories like the Conjuring ones are. How do you find that perfect balance, James? And 
uh, for you slash working on something, are you like, you want to work in a world where it is based off of true things? Well, I mean, true things are great, you know, and people love to, to see something that they didn't know about that was actually happening. And if it's really horrific, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very intriguing, you know. So it can be, I mean, real stuff that's based on a true story is great, but, you know, really great fiction is awesome as well. You know, just depends on really how, how well it's written, how well it's put together. And then knowing that it's based off of a true story for you, James, there's this interesting balance of where Slash comes in and says, I want it to be bigger and even scarier <laughs> than the last. How do you strike that balance of saying, okay, Lorraine is still around, the family right. is still around, <laughs> finding that perfect balance where you're like, okay, I'm going to be true to this story, right. but also we've got an audience here that wants to be terrified. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, listen, it's, uh, you know, that, that's where the challenge comes in, right? Um, I, I, I have to be respectful to, uh, you know, to, the, to these people that I'm making the movies about. You know, they're still around, like you pointed out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, you know, I want to be empathetic to kind of what they went through back then. And, uh, and you know, um, but, you know, but at the same time, I have to be mindful that uh, I'm making a movie that, that an audience would like to see. And so, you know, that they, you know, an audience wants to be scared, wants to be terrified with the, with the set pieces. And so... But, but what I like to do is I like to use the foundation, you know, what, uh, of reported truth, whatever I've heard and what they've told me story-wise, and use that foundation to sort of build my scares. So that way, there's always a balance of um, some sense of um, truism, uh, you know, in, in there. <laughs> yes. So, yes. <laughs> Which makes it fascinating because when you're, when you're watching the movie, you're going, well, this is based on a true story. So how much of this is actually real and how much of it is creative license? And you don't really know, but you just get so engrossed in the whole thing that it doesn't really matter. But you do think about it, you know. Well, and I think that that also brings something up where you're totally engrossed in it. You get on set and you always hear stories about crazy things happening on horror sets, especially sets like this where it is something that is real and Lorraine is around. Uh -huh. I read a little something that said that you had the set blessed before you guys started working on this one. Is that true? That is right. We had a priest come down to set on the first day to bless it. No shit, really? <laughs> yeah. No shit. That's <laughs> real. Um, Flash, are you like, I want to come to the set next time? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, actually, because the first movie, the first Conjuring, um, you know, uh, it, it didn't actually happen to me or around me, but, uh, but I think, you know, with my cast and crew, they, they actually experienced a few sort of supernatural, paranormal stuff, and so... Going to the second one, uh, I don't know whose idea it was, but I thought it was a stroke of genius to bring your priest Couldn't in hurt, to, uh, right? to bless it. Yeah, you can never get too much uh, good positive energy. So true. And I, I got to do the junket, so I talked with some of the cast. And Maddie was saying that she sent in her audition tape, and she was like, the year on it, when they taped it, said 2016. And when they sent it in, it changed to like 1976. Which is insane. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what they told me as well. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have any experiences like that happening with the horror films you've been working on or just in Life Slash? Um, well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you're around the horror genre, stuff like that starts to happen a little bit more because you're so open to it. Know, when my, was my, the last time you traveled back in time? Slash? Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I, can, if I can remember anything that specific. Did anything creepy happen on any of the sets of your films yet? Um, I say yet because it's bound well, to happen. Well, yeah, the, the, well, nothing left. To, uh, no, yeah, nothing left to fear. There was a lot of creepy stuff going on the whole time, but uh, you know that was. I don't know if that was supernatural. If that was just the crew, you know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, let's prank him. We're just gonna do some creepy things while we're filming and see how he reacts. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I love the idea of having, you know, sort of that 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 vibe. Of, that sort of is what the movie's all about, to be sort of surrounded by it so that you're really in the moment. I love that. Um, so we got a couple questions on Facebook here. Elizabeth Stevenson asks, do you have any tips or words of inspiration for an aspiring filmmaker, especially for horror films? That one's for both of you guys. Right. Um, yeah, tips. I mean, the, 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 the most important thing I can think of is perseverance and patience. Um, because it, it takes a lot of work and it takes, it's, it's pretty slow moving at first to get it all going. And patience is, is key. And this is one, patience is one thing that you're really good with. <laughs> it's, it's what makes this movie so scary is that to be able to stand, you know, sit back and wait for something to happen instead of rushing into it. Right, yeah. The, the reward of patience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, listen, I mean, you know, I, I, I tell aspiring filmmakers these days, you guys are so lucky today because you pretty much have the best technology at your disposal. Back in the days, you know, back when I was going to film school, we had to shoot things on film and it was really clunky and cumbersome. And today you can pretty much make anything with like your cell phone, with, you know, small little video camera that you buy for so cheaply. Go shoot it and make it with your friends because you can do so much things today and, uh, and true. But make it. And you guys have an incredible platform, right, to put oh, it out there on YouTube. Yeah, you go on YouTube. It's, there's so much of it yeah, out there. Yeah, and so, uh, so just make something great and put it out there and you will be, you know, chances are if it's great, you, you, you can get noticed. Well, and jumping off of that a little bit for both of you guys, when you're looking for your next project to work on or things to work with, people to work with, ideas to branch out on, I know specifically there's one that you found from something being online that you're like, yeah, I'm going to work on this. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, the, the movie that I just pr I produced, uh, Lights Out, that's coming out next month in July, that, that, that's the perfect example of a film that you know, we came across. I was on, just going to say you know, that, yeah. On YouTube, uh, it was just a guy you know, uh, in his living room in Sweden, and he just made it with his wife. And, uh, and he made this you know, really cool, fun little short that went crazy viral. And, and, and what I liked about it was uh, I, I, I love the simplicity of the concept, but I also love like, the, the smartness thinking behind it. And so that's what Hollywood kind of look for these days. And so, uh, so if you guys can bring something that has the seed of a concept of an idea that could be a bigger thing, you know, you guys can, uh, can get it out there. I just actually met him. Recently, David? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I met him over at Paradigm, and, and it was great because he did this this little short, and he's from Sweden, and he doesn't have any real experience in the film business, and all of a sudden he's been thrown into the industry, and he was like he was like a deer in headlights, you know? He, yeah, he, yeah, he is. Is like, oh, really? I get to do this? Oh, great! With a crew, I've really, never had a crew before. It was really cool to see, you know, somebody getting uh, getting the, the opportunity to be able to do what they're passionate about suddenly on this big platform. Well, and you hear so much, I think specifically in the horror genre, that that happens a lot more, that people get their break doing horror. What do you think it is about that genre that makes it somewhere where film directors and writers can really, like, grow, um, sharpen their teeth? I know. I think if you're really, really creative, the, the horror genre is a great, uh, a, a great springboard for it, you know? Yeah, and, uh, you know, f f for myself growing up, you know, I, I looked up to um, my idols, like s people like Sam Raimi and all that, and, and, and all these guys, you know, I read, reading about them saying that horror is probably like the best genre to break, it, break out there with because, um, because horror comes with such a built-in loyal fan base, you That's guys true. out there. Yeah. yeah, you guys are the reason why I have a career. <laughs> And, uh, and, so, uh, and so, yeah, so it's really cool to have that. And, and, and you know, like, yeah, the fan base are so, you know, they, they, they love stuff, they, they love the genre, and they really, you know, if, if we put out there, you know, something that's really unique, they, you know, they really champion it, and it's, it's fantastic for us. Well, and speaking of that awesome fan base, we've got another question in from Facebook. Uh, Jody Williams asks, would you ever spend the night at a haunted location? That's a good question. <laughs> There's a pause I mean, from both of them. It's like ah. I used to spend the night in a haunted location pretty regularly, but um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I think that would it, I, I think that would be pretty interesting, but I don't know if I'd want to do it just by myself in a sleeping bag. You know, <laughs> like, we'd have to have a couple of us in there and something. I feel like that's always though. You have a couple people come in, and the one person's like. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. And well, you're you like, that, that is the beginning of a horror film. Yeah, that whole sort of dare thing where you get eight kids to go in there and they drop off one by one. You know. <laughs> I feel like we're writing the next horror film that you guys should do together right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and jumping off of that, where we got to talk a little bit about something that's coming up next for you. But Slash, what's next for you? What are you working on? Um, well, I have a, a bunch of stuff in development, but I'm still plugging away on The Hell Within, and I think we just... Uh, finally picked a director as of today. Woo! So, uh, we, so wheels are all, because it's been slow coming, we've had all kinds of obstacles, as you know how that goes. Yes. <laughs> and so it's finally, it's finally picked up steam and now it's full, full steam ahead. So I'm pretty excited That's about awesome. it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and James, for you, obviously, Lights Out is coming up. Is there anything else that you want to share with everybody here and on Facebook that's coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what? I got to try for the fans, right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I got a bunch of stuff um, um, cooking away, percolating away, uh, um, you know, stuff that I'm producing. And, uh, and of course, you know, um, I have a bunch of projects that I've got um, cooking away as director, one of which is um, participating in the DC Universe. Oh, Woo! really? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and also another one, Robotech, is another cool project that I love as well. Awesome. I love that. And even just jumping off of that where you're saying d totally different genres, if you guys had to pick another favorite film genre aside from horror, do you have one that is your go-to? Um, well, I mean, it's like with, with horror, there's, there's science fiction and thrillers and all that sort of rolled into one. So, I mean, just to make it simple. But I, I think probably comedy would be the next one over. You know? Yeah. Instant gratification, I think that's... Yeah, <laughs> yeah ho horror and comedy pretty much lives in the same world. Yeah, yeah. If the film's working, you can tell that the audience, are, you know, they're either liking it or, or they're not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's pretty exactly. quickly, yeah. What is that experience like for both of you guys where it's like you've worked on a film, you've got an audience here, and you have those moments where people jump or scream or yell things out? Because for me, when I watch horror films, I'm like, nope, 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 and I cover my eyes. I definitely come dressed ready. Like, I'll wear a scarf around my neck so I can kind of half cover my face for most of it. But what is it like for you guys experiencing your films for the first time with an audience? Um, getting a reaction uh, while you're screening a movie or while you're in the audience um, watching a movie that you made with an audience. Um, just hearing that reaction and the reaction that you were sort of hoping for is, is totally gratifying. It makes, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's my favorite part. That's the most rewarding part about making a movie like this is, you know, watching the audience watch my movie and, uh, yeah, just watching, you know, them squirming their seats, hiding behind <laughs> their eyes, screaming and then laughing at themselves. That, that's, that's just amazing. Yeah. I'm like... Thank you, James and Slash, both for terrifying me. <laughs> um, after I saw The Conjuring 2, I had to go home and I like put on some Disney music, some happy stuff to listen to. Yeah, I will totally blow up my own spot that I'm a huge geek and I was terrified after seeing it. Um, but what is it that you guys each do after working on a horror film or being scared where you're just like, okay, I just need to cleanse the palate. I need to get this horrifying imagery out of my head. Why don't it was me always first? <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, can go first. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that, y you know, you get so absorbed in it, it's not until it's actually wrapped. And you, well, actually, when you're, when you're done with posts and all that stuff, and you, that you actually can get away from it because it just becomes such a part of your daily routine for so long. Right. Yeah, and, and for me, I mean, you know, when I'm making the movie, I don't usually get too scared by my own product, but for me, the moment that I actually, uh, that my, my ideas actually scare me is when I'm uh, at the writing stage and, uh, and, and I'm designing and writing um, my set pieces, and, and what I do, literally as a gauge, is I switch off all the lights off in my house, right. and, uh, and it's midnight or 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning, and I'm pacing around the house, think, coming up with crazy, scary ideas, and if they creep the hell out of me, then I know it's working. Yeah, that's awesome. That's my barometer. That is not cool. I mean, no. And, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be. Everybody in the it. house leaves. Oh, James is just freaking himself out. So <laughs> I'm just screaming from the living room for no apparent reason. Uh, that, that's actually one of the advantage about doing Fast and Furious Seven was no scary dreams. Uh, <laughs> dream of cars. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, just going from there, where you're talking about, you spend so much time in this world. You spend so much time figuring out the things that are going to scare us, scare the audience. What still does actually scare you guys? You first. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, your turn, James. I would say the real world terrifies me. Uh, the real world is much frightening than anything I can uh, cook up with. But, uh, but a couple of nights ago, I saw a skunk in my backyard, and that freaks the hell out of me. That, no, seriously, that's one of my fears, to be sprayed by a skunk. Right. I'm terrified of that. And my dogs, ugh. I just want you to know that you shared that with everyone watching on the Movie Clips Facebook page right now. <laughs> Let's cut that out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but you know, that's a that's a that's a pretty good fear to have. I mean, you know, <laughs> all things considered. I'm um, like, I just immediately go back to Disney, and I'm like, Flower, you're like Flower the skunk from Bambi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can call me Flower. <laughs> <laughs> and we've just come up with a new nickname for Slash. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, so, yeah, I don't, I get asked that a lot. I think you've even asked me that before, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have, like, what you would, cons you know, fears that, that, you know, I'm not superstitious, really, and I'm not paranoid too much or anything. Um, I, 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 the things I'm scared of are more like, you know, something going wrong what, that I'm working on or something like that, and you sort of get the thing in the back of your head that's a possibility, and you're sort of trying to push it aside. Um, that, that's basically it off the top of my head. Other than that, I'm scared of the same things that everybody else is scared of, 
you know, being confronted in a situation by a guy with a chainsaw would be scary. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you just put those fears in movie form. So you're like, if it's out there, that's a great I won't outlet. think about yeah. it. <laughs> well, and that, we talked about that a little bit, James, where it was just like, Talking with you guys, both of you, you're both such sweet, happy, like, joyful guys talking, where it's like, how does all of this stuff come out of your brain? Well, um, listen, I just, um, you know, uh, you know pe people say to me, oh, you, you make all these scary movies, you must not be afraid of anything. And I'm like, no, I'm actually quite the opposite. I'm terrified of everything. Um, <laughs> everything Especially is frightening. Skunks. I'm a, yeah, yes, exactly. I'm a big chicken. But no, I think, uh, I think you kind of need to be, uh, you need to know what's scary to be able to make scary movies like these. Uh, I mean, you know, I use the analogy that, you know, um, you need to know what, you need to have a sense of humor. A comedian needs to have a sense of humor to know what kind of comedy to do, right? And so I think that's important that uh, you understand what it is that, um, that the human psychosis is, is afraid of. And, uh, and, you know, and, and those fears that we have are very, um, you know, very common, and that's what my movies tend to play on, on, uh, you know, very, very sort of um, primal, everyday, emotional fears that we have. You know, we, f you know, we, we fear, you know, the fear of the unknown, fear of uh, one's life, and fear of losing your loved ones. And so these are very classic primal fears that we have, and these are the themes that I generally l play with a lot in my films. And then talking about all of this and hearing where you guys started, where you are with horror films, it's got to start from somewhere, watching your first horror film where you were just like, oh, man, the adrenaline rush. What was the first horror film that really did that for each of you? Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard. You know, I was, I was raised, uh, when I was a little kid, I lived in England, right? So we had tons of Hammer movies. Um, that were coming out all the time. Remember the house that dripped blood, all this Vincent Price stuff. And, yeah. Um, so I was just innately attracted to anything that was creepy, scary, ghostly, macabre, you know, all this stuff. So there was books and movies. I mean, remember the movie Trog, you know, the, yes. the, right? Yes. All these old English movies, uh -huh. Conga, you know, the, the, yeah. the Britain answer to King Kong. And then, but what happened was I, I moved to the States and I went to, uh, I went to go see The Exorcist and The Night of the Living Dead at a drive-in with my mom. And that was where the first, that was when I really was like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been, I've been, you know, sort of watching horror movies ever since. It's, it's funny that you said with your mom, because my mom took me to see my first scary movie as well. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes, I think I was seven years old. And, uh, I was seven, yeah. I said, yeah, hey, there you go, seven. And I think, oh, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. guys, got me for life. That movie makes me, I, have a bit of a fetish with dolls, yeah. <laughs> creepy dolls, <laughs> and uh, from Saw to uh, to Dead Silence to a lot of the movies I've made, and uh, and because of Poltergeist, it's kind of scarred me for life. Yeah, it has that element with creepy dolls. Well, it's scarier than uh, The Exorcist because yeah. because you can relate the, to it And there's more. little kids in it it's, that yeah. are being terrorized, and so it's a different kind of a trip. But I mean, I love The Exorcist. I was totally had the hots for Linda Blair from that. So I was just I'm just a weird kid, you know. <laughs> Post possession, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, you no. Know, I mean, I thought she, you know, I thought she had to have a great sense of humor to be that girl. You know. I love that. I love hearing your guys' stories. I still can't believe both of your moms took you at such a young age because me seeing horror films. I remember seeing Freddy Krueger and. I snuck and jump onto the bed because I was scared I was going to get slashed. And my mom was like, this is why I told you you're not allowed to watch horror films. Right. <laughs> um, and just talking about Shane Clifford asks, what other horror cast would have benefited from the Warrens' help? What other horror cast? Other horror. No, just like the, the fictional but, uh, another characters. Another franchise that yeah. would have benefited. First Activity? couple of paranoia. They yeah. definitely could have used the Warrens. Well, know? listen, I think, you know, the, the, the Ed and Lorraine Warren in some ways possibly feels like today's version of um, Mulder and Scully, right? Totally. Yeah. The, them, you know, um, investigate, you know, like episodes of the... Getting your hands on and being like, James, well, these, I feel like... Uh, Conjuring 1 and 2 are so... You, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm trying to find what that next story potentially could be. <gasps> so it's like ghosts with mohawks or something. <laughs> <laughs> With big earrings. <laughs> <laughs> and, and partly because uh, Patrick Wilson has said warmers. to me, Patrick Wilson has said to me, he would love to get rid of that, those sideburns. You watch a horror film that takes place in a different time that it's easier for you to kind of let your imagination run wild in it? 
Well, I mean, the, the, well, I mean, their careers span from like 60s, 70s, 80s, and a bit into the 90s. Mm -hmm. And so they, they've been around for a long time, many, many decades. And so, uh, so you know, it would be a very organic thing to um, just, you know, kind of grow with, um, with, with the Warrens. Um, you know, um, and, you know, and hopefully, you know, uh, with each movie, potentially a new era, it could be interesting. Right. And, then, and when you do like an older type setting, I mean, it's intriguing, but it's also, it's, it's how well it's executed. You know, so, I mean, if you do something that's sort of more contemporary, it's a little bit easier to sort of, you know, depending on the story, but doing the older stuff is a little harder. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I would know there's one scene in particular in this film that you guys are about to see that I'm super pumped that made me kind of jump up out of the chair and almost walk out of the theater. I was like, I, can't, I don't know if I can keep sitting through this. Is there a particular scene from The Conjuring Slash that you remember seeing that you were just like, nope, too far? Nah. <laughs> no, I mean, I love all that shit. Yeah. Um, I'm, the, I'm the person that, that has nightmares and tries to go back to sleep so I can keep it, you know. So. But I mean, I, I, there's stuff in the movie. I can't spill the beans because there's people online that yeah. haven't seen it yet. But there's some key moments in the movie that are just fantastic that, you know, didn't, I, I wanted to see, you know, just keep, stay in the moment with it. Can you remember a particular moment from maybe one of your films or another horror film that made you have one of those jump out of your seat moments? For me or for yeah, the audience? For you. Uh, I don't really get scared by my own movies. <laughs> I mean, I every single second of footage you spend so much time with, yeah. it's pretty hard to get scared by your own yeah, shit. Because I'm yeah. looking at it every day for like months after months after months. But, uh, but that's why I love watching an audience watching it, because mm. I get to experience it with the audience for the first time, and, you know, that's where it's But have cool. you ever gone back to an older movie and got scared of something that you've already made a long uh, time yeah, ago? Good, good yeah, point. good uh, point. <laughs> I actually think yes. Uh, when I would kind of catch Insidious on TV every now and then, and when the demon appears behind Patrick's head, I kind of forget about that. Yeah, right. Like, whoa, okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like that's a nod to yourself to be like, man, I make some good horror films. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always fun to do because I feel like there is something to be said where I've been in it, like you were saying, for so long, it's hard to know what those particular moments are going to be anymore for yourself. So when you get to go back and watch it and you're like, man, I scared myself. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so you guys, obviously, we're all here to see the... Uh, before we get to that, is there anything that you want to tell the audience to get them ready to see this, to be terrified out of their minds? Me? Yeah, both of you. Either of you. Uh, well, oh, um, yeah, this um, over at Warner Brothers one afternoon, not knowing that much about... This one, just again... Um, you know, the, 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 you know, I think we said the person was a big part of it, and and you know, going to this movie, we just we really made this movie with a lot of passion. We really believed in it, and uh, yeah, and then we just gave it everything we've got. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy it and uh, and have a great time watching it. Are you guys ready to be horrifying? Out a huge thank you to Slash for coming and chatting with us, Thanks. and James for hanging out with us as well. Make sure you guys share the link from Movie Clips Facebook page, and for all of you guys out there who got posters. Make sure you check the back of them because if there's a bracelet on there, then you are going to get to meet Slash after Woo! the film. Thank you guys all again so much. Make See you after. <laughs>